When I came out in my garage this morning to work out, it was 28 degrees. 28 degrees! In other words, if I want to work out in this garage, in this temperature, I gotta put on a hat, a coat, gloves, and a scarf. And I gotta tell you, this is no way to work out. So today, we're gonna to fix that and hopefully help you warm up your cold home garage. When most of us put together a home gym, it's more often than not that we get squeezed into the dark, unused, cold, unheated, unair conditioned areas of our house. In my house, that's the garage. It's not heated, luckily it's attached, but it's not always the most comfortable place in the world to be. And in order for me to work out every day like I want to, I've got to make it comfortable. Now, here near, near Chicago, it's been one of the coldest winters on record. And I've spent most of my time dressed like this. Every day, get the gloves, get the hat, get the scarf, get the winter jacket, which is fine for going outside. I live in Chicago, near Chicago. But in the end, I don't want to have to dress like this when I come out here to work out. So a couple of years ago, I got the bright idea that I was going to insulate my garage door and that that would be enough. And for the last few years, we've been lucky with really mild winters. This year, not so much. So this year, I've decided to go the extra mile and actually make sure that my garage gym is a warm and cozy place to be so that I can come out here and work out on a regular basis in the winter. Now, there's a lot more things that you can do in your garage or your basement or wherever you happen to be that's cold that can heat things up. And I've actually written an entire article on the Gym Crafter website of how to take care of heating up a cold home gym. So if you go over to gymcrafter.com slash heat, you'll actually see everything and all the tips that I don't even share in this video. But for today, we're going to talk about my garage and the things that I'm going to do. So, to kind of outline the game plan so far, we've got to get it up to at least close to a good temperature so that a heater can take the rest of the job and warm it up to a, a usable space in the wintertime. And what we're going to do is we're going to address the main points in a garage where you're leaking heat. And that starts with the garage door. So we're going to take a look at the garage door. This is a single pane or single panel garage door. It's not a dual thickness garage door. For those of you who have those, you're good with this step. But for most of us that have these thin garage doors, I'm going to take it, I'm going to put some insulation in there. I'm also going to address the wall. Now, I only have one wall that faces the outside. I'm in a townhouse, so both sides are actually insulated. Um, for those of you who have to insulate all four sides of your garage, it's going to be the same principle. So we're going to take a look at taking the wood that's really just the exterior wall and getting some insulation on there. We're also going to take a look at where the door meets the wall. And that's a big area that people overlook and an area where a lot of cold air can get in especially if it's windy outside. Then lastly, what we're going to take a look at is once it's insulated so that we know that the heat's staying in and we're keeping as much cold out as we can, what we're going to do is we're going to look at effective ways to bring the temperature up inside the garage in a relatively quick time so that we can actually get it to a usable temperature. Now, we don't need it the same temperature as inside. It's definitely a conducive environment to work at, to work out in if it's 55, 60, 65 degrees. So we don't need to do a ton but we need to definitely get it up above freezing. So, and that's where it was this morning when I came in. So let's get a start. All right, so we're gonna take a look at how to fix this garage door. Now, a long time ago, I thought it was a good idea. I just went and what I did is I picked up some cheap insulation and I figured I'll just stick this in the door and that'll work great. And unfortunately, not so much. A, it doesn't really stay in that well. B, it doesn't look that great. And C, this little cheap foam stuff only has an R value of I think two. So when I look this, when I look at this and uh, what it actually does for my garage door, it doesn't do a whole lot. Also, I had to use these kind of wood pieces to keep it in. So it's not necessarily in there real well. It's kind of a janky job, and I really want to fix it. I think that changing these panels out for something better is really going to make a huge difference. Now, if you start looking at insulation kits for your garage door on Amazon or on other websites, you're going to run into a lot of different options. In fact, you're going to run into five or six different kind of primary options that you have. And they're going to range in price from all the way from real cheap to real expensive. So let's start with what I went with, why I went with it, and then also why I didn't go with some of the other options. So I went with something that has an R8 value. 
Now you can get as high as R10 and R12, however, if you look at the actual charts of how much difference that's going to make in temperature, you get less and less of a, of a difference as you go higher in the R value. The difference from R2 to R8 is monumental, but when you start getting from R8 to R10 and R12, um, it's an incremental gain. So this was really the sweet spot for cost to benefit ratio. That was the other difference was this was affordable. The higher R value stuff was really getting cost prohibitive for me. I didn't want to spend a fortune, but I was willing to spend a little bit. So what I went with was an Owens Corning uh, garage door insulation kit. And uh, this has everything you need. I've got a two car garage. So one box is enough to do one half of my door. I got two boxes, and then I got something else that I'll show you to aid in the insulation. What I also picked up was some white Gorilla Tape. And the reason I did that is these panels, they're just individual panels that will go in, are each going to fit in a bay here. And they have these little kind of pegs that hold them in. But there's nothing to really hold them in here except for this lip. And after reading a bunch of reviews, adding this tape around the end is going to give me a nice seal. It's not only going to give me a better seal and better weather protection than this stuff is, but it's going to look a whole lot nicer as well. So this is a, a, a good idea as a, an accessory for your installation. And I'll link all this stuff down below that you, so that you can see what I went with. Now I mentioned before that at, before I decided on this, I ruled out a couple of other things. So let me kind of go over what those were. First of all, I forget what the name is, but there's a real high price kit online. Look, there's no reason to spend that much money on this. You're not going to have any noticeable or appreciable difference by spending that much more money. And I think this is really the sweet spot uh, for where it's going to be. Again, I'll link this down below so you can kind of check out the current pricing on it over on Amazon. The other thing that I kind of bypassed or, or decided not to go with was they have these big white solid foam sheets that are R4 or R6 or something like that. And uh, if you watch the installation videos, they're stiff, so you kind of have to wedge them in and and jam them in there, and, and I saw a couple of videos where they started to crack and break, and, and A, the, ins, the installation or the ease of installation wasn't there, it's not really what I wanted, and B, they really weren't that much less than this Owens Corning kit. So I decided again to go with the sweet spot of cost for benefit, and I really think that these um, really fit that bill. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get going, I'm gonna get this stuff off of the garage door, and then I'm going to get these installed and then I'll come back and kind of show you what it looks like when I'm done and kind of show you the next steps after that. So I've got all the current insulation off of my garage door, as you can see, and I wanted to take just a minute and show you what comes in the kit. So the instructions are on the outside of the box. It's basically pretty simple. Um, you're going to take these guys right there. We're going to stick two in each door section. Then we're going to take and cut these panels. Uh, they are definitely of a good size. They're bigger than my door panels are, so each one will need to be cut. You're going to cut each one to size. You're going to push them up on these pegs. You're going to put another peg on top of it, kind of like you see in the picture there. And that's going to hold them in. And then we're going to take that Gorilla Tape that I showed you and put it all around the outside edge to keep it in. So it's going to take a little longer than I thought. But uh, looking forward to getting this done. Also, nice, cool touch. They do give you uh, gloves so that, A, you don't get insulation in your fingers or in your skin. If you've ever had that before, you know that's no fun. So you definitely want to use these gloves when you're working with insulation. So let me get this first uh, set of panels up, and I'll come back and show you what it looks like. We're about 30 minutes in, and I have about half of the door done. And I wanted to take a quick pause and give you a couple of tips. So for those of you out there who decided to go the same route I did and use this kit, there's a couple of things that are uh, I found kind of along the way that might help you out. So first of all, you're gonna have to cut those squares to size. They're gonna come bigger than uh, what you need, which is nice. So uh, it's easier to make them smaller, real hard to make them hard, uh, larger. So when you cut them, uh, I've been cutting them down here. The first time I did it, I just kind of put them down on the ground. And what I realized is this white material here uh, picks up dirt like crazy. So it definitely will show the dirt. So the first one that I laid down on the ground uh, got real, real dirty. So um, the next tip that I have for you is basically how these are whole held up here is you'll see these are held up by these double stick tape squares and you have one sticking out there and then we have another one that's going to go in over the top. 
and that's what holds the, uh, the panels in. I can definitely tell you, number one, I'm going to need that Gorilla Tape. There's no way that just these two pieces are going to hold that panel in over time. It's going to sag and fall out, and it's just not going to stay up. So I'll show you the tape here in a minute. Um, a couple other tips. The end that you cut to fit in, if you've got to see the section that fits back in here, if you've got segments like this on your door, take the part that you cut and push it back into here. That way, the side here that you're going to tape is nice and straight. You'll notice on this one, I put the part I cut on the left-hand side, and it's going to be much harder to tape this. It's not a nice clean line, so that's one. The other tip that I'll give you is you'll read a lot of the reviews where they say that, that these things break, and I will tell you, I haven't had one break yet. You just kind of got to be gentle with them, and what you're going to do is you push them through the, uh, the panel, they just pop right through, and then you take this other one and you, you put it on there. So what we'll notice there is, see how that, the vinyl gets stuck in there? What you want to do is you pull that so that it goes over and then it slides in. So that way you get a nice tight fit. So that's what I've got so far. Again, taking about a half an hour to do eight total panels. I have eight more to do. So this is probably going to be about an hour and a half to a two hour project once I'm done. We'll see how long it takes to put the tape on. Time check. All the panels are done and ready for tape. Took me just about an hour to get all of those up. So it's not too bad of a project at all. Well, I think I'm done with the door. So I thought I was going to put up this white tape around the edges here. Uh, a lot of people online said that these wouldn't hold it in and at first when I put it up I even commented here a little bit ago that I didn't think that these little buttons would hold this up but I gotta say that A after trying to get this up it's not the easiest thing in the world and actually on the couple of panels that I did get it up on I actually ended up taking it down. Um, it looked terrible and I didn't really think it was helping to hold the panels in place any. Um, you know, the panels are a little bit bigger, and they're kind of wedged in along the outside here. They're held up by these, which are actually holding in place just fine. I really think what I'm going to do is let it sit, and if the panels do decide to sag over time, I can always go back and, and put some tape up there and hold them up there a little bit better. But I don't think it's going to be necessary. I have a couple other ideas, but in the end, the whole door is done. I can already feel a difference in the garage. Now, typically, in my garage, before I put these up with the old insulation, if it was, for example, 20 degrees outside, it was about 30 to 35 in here. It typically be about 10 to 15 degrees warmer in the garage. Now, right now outside, it's about 28 degrees, and in here, it's 52. So part of it is I've been working in here, um, but part of it is these. These really, you can tell, even as I walked across in front of the door, the portions of the door that didn't have the panels on, you could feel the cold just rolling off of the door, whereas the portions with the panel um, no cold at all coming off the door. So that's it for this part of the project. There's two more or three more things that I want to do that I'll show you here in just a second. But for now, the door is done. Time to move on to the next part. So the, the next part of the project is this. Now, again, I mentioned earlier, I'm fortunate. Only the front of my wall, you know, here's my door, here's my front wall of my garage, is not insulated. And this is typically what you'll see along all four walls of a freestanding garage or at least the other sides. Now on the sides, mine are, or as you've seen in other videos, they're drywall, they're insulated. It's real nice, so I only have the front to do. But I do have the whole left side all the way across the top and then all the way down on this other side over here. So I'm going to have to move the shelving out of the way, which is part of the plan anyway, but uh, to get some insulation up there. So. Uh, that's the next spot, so that way the whole front of the uh, garage, which wasn't insulated at all, should all be insulated, and that should cut down on the cold out here by quite a bit. So let's get rolling on that. There we go. This took me about 20 minutes, and every little spot on the wall that didn't have insulation is now insulated. Now when you're looking at making sure your garage door is fully insulated, these panels are just part of the battle. The other part that you want to look at is you want to look at the edges around the outside of your garage door. So I don't know if you can see this really well or not, but right under here, under the bottom of the garage door, there's a seal. And that seal on my garage door 
comes up probably about 10 inches short. You can see the daylight down there. And if I hold my hand down here, what I can feel is I can just feel cold air pouring in. So if you've got any openings like that, what's going to happen is if you don't take care of them, you can do all of the insulation that you want. It's not really going to do anything because you've basically got an open space to the outside sitting in your door. So let me show you a little bit closer what I'm missing here and how I'm going to fix it. And then also something else that you're going to want to take a look at. Fortunately, I've got it already taken care of, but just to point it out as something you want to take a look at on your garage door as well. So here under the door is where we're missing the part of the seal. You can see that it comes up to this edge here, stops, and this is the spot that I was looking at where we have the missing seal. And I'm going to fill that in here in just a minute. But the other thing you want to look at is, you'll notice around the garage door, is you've got this weather stripping here. So take a look at your garage door, and if you don't have this, you're going to want to go ahead and put some in. You can see it's a board attached to weather stripping all around the door. And it gives it a nice tight seal against the door and keeps things like the wind and the snow from coming in. Well, that took all about two minutes to put in. I put an extra piece of weather stripping under the bottom here, and I can already tell by holding my hand down here that the amount of cold coming out has been completely stopped. So I've got a great seal all around the outside of the door. I've fixed the one hole here. There's one more thing I want to take care of. I want to show you, as I noticed um, something on the insulation panels that I put in, I kind of want to give you guys a tip um, if you do this uh, similar installation. Um, so let me show you something real quick and then we'll be done with the door. What I noticed as I was putting the bottom insulation strip in was that over the last couple of weeks, it's actually been a couple of weeks since I put these panels in, um, that the edges on, on some of these are actually coming out. Now, as you'll remember on the video before, I talked about putting some tape along the sides. And what I've noticed is the parts where the panels can fit up underneath something, these are all standing real nice. I don't think they're going to go anywhere. I don't think they need anything extra. But along a couple of the edges of the door where there's no kind of lip to put the insulation under, the sides have started to kind of pop out. So what I'm going to do is I've got a fix for that. Uh, I'm going to show you that right now. It's something I used with the previous panels. I was hoping I wouldn't have to use it with this, but I don't think the tape is the right solution, but I do have a nice solution for this for those of you who have decided to use this type of panel. Here's the before, and here's the after. Let me show you what I did. What I did was I went to the local Home Depot, and I picked up, uh, this is in the molding section, uh, nothing fancy. These are pieces of pine that are cut and painted white. Nice match to the white on the panels. And then what I did was I cut them so that the right length, the bottom goes in this little channel here, the top hooks under here. So what happens is you can put this up here and then slide it in. And then in no time at all, you've got something real nice that holds that edge in. And that gives a nice finished look. It's a heck of a lot easier to put in than that tape. And if I ever decide to take these out for some reason and you change the garage door or anything like that, these will pop right out. So just the pressure of the panel and being that they're the right length holds them in place real nice. And as you can see, gives a nice finished look to the garage. So that's it for the garage. I've sealed the entire outside edge. I've got all the panels in, seated securely so that they fit. It wasn't all that expensive and I'm real happy. It's already warmer in here. And the nice thing is in the summertime, uh, it gets pretty hot. This will keep the cool air in here as well. So now that I'm done with the door, let's go on to the last step. So for the last part of the project, we're going to come back into the corner of my gym and see one of my favorite things that I bought for my gym that has nothing to do with working out. And that's my heater. What I realized is that no matter how good of a job I did of insulating the walls, making sure all the leaks of cold air were plugged, it still got really cold out here and that meant that I needed some supplemental heat. I did a lot of looking around and I thought about propane heaters, uh, big electric ceramic heaters, and I actually tried a few of them. And the one thing that I landed on that has really worked better than anything else is this guy right here. This is a Dr. Infrared infrared heater. And the way that I, fa I found this was, this has an amazing number of great reviews on Amazon. So I figured with that many positive reviews, I'd give it a try. This is actually the third heater that I've tried for my garage. 
but I'll tell you, it's been worth it. It's a little bit larger than the other ones that I did, but I think that makes a difference. But it's really cool. Um, you can set it for a temperature so it's got a thermostat. What I'll do is in the morning when I get up, I'll come out here and I'll fire this thing up about 20 minutes before I want to work out. It's got a remote control, which is cool, although I don't use it a lot. And I'll set it for about 10 degrees warmer than it currently is in the garage. I go back inside, I get ready, I get changed, and by the time I come out here to work out, the gym's comfortable. It's amazing that something so small can heat such a big place. Now, I'll be real honest with you. It's not kicking out heat to where it feels like my living room. But it heats up the gym enough to where when I come out to work out, it's comfortable. And I don't avoid working out because it's too cold. Also, since I leave it on during the workout, over the course of the workout, at some point, it works well enough that I actually have to turn it off. So, again, I'll link this down below in the notes. I've tried a ton of different heaters, and I can't speak highly enough about this Dr. Infrared. Um, just one tip, there are two models, and I'll link this model, which is the one that I think you should buy. There's also one that has a humidifier built in, and while that's a great idea, if you read through the reviews, what you'll see is that those tend to fail more often than not. So don't go for the extra, just get the basic heater, and I think you'll be really happy. So if you live in a cold area, like here in the Chicagoland area, um, this is one of the best things you'll buy for your gym outside of the gym equipment that you use to work out with. And with that, that's all I've got for heating up your cold garage. Keep in mind that a lot of the things that we did will also keep the garage cooler in the summertime. And I'm really convinced that if you go through and take the time to take care of the problems in your garage as far as whether it's too hot or too cold, it'll mean a gym that you use more often and that's really what is most important in the end. So I'm Tim for Gym Crafter. Until next time.